So how has our lithium iron phosphate DIY battery been doing after 400 days? Today we're going to tell you. Welcome to Freely Roaming. My name is Dan. My family and I have been driving around the world overland going on 14 years. We've driven over four continents and visited 37 countries so far during that time. This channel is dedicated to showing you all the nitty gritty details of how we're able to make that happen. If you are interested in seeing our travel vlogs, check out our other channel, Molly Mesh. So it's been a little over a year since we designed, built, and installed our DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack into our Sprinter van. Now, if you haven't seen that battery build series, I will place a link of the playlist in the description below for you to watch later. For now, I can give a little bit of background of the upgrade. We built a 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate 12.8 volt battery pack using brand new grade A prismatic cells I bought from AliExpress. Using a 4S Dolly BMS and an active cell balancer, our pack was built at less than half of the price of a comparable commercially available pack. We also added temperature sensors, a cooling fan, as well as heating pads to make it safe to use in extreme weather conditions. It was designed and built to be much more capable than most off-the-shelf commercially made battery packs. But of course, as a DIY project, there's no warranty against failures. So if you plan to build your own, make sure you understand all of the safety measures and assume all of the risks yourself. So a lot of people have been asking just how well the battery pack has held up over regular use. Well, we wanted to wait until we have at least a year under our belts before sharing our experience. So here it is. In this past year, we have traveled all across Croatia from Korčula Island to the south, all the way up to Zagreb to the north. We left Croatia six months ago and made our way across Western Europe through Slovenia, Austria, Germany, and France before taking a ferry to Ireland for the summer months. We've been busy editing and uploading all of our travel vlogs on our Molly Mish channel. Go check that out if you want to see what we do when we're not making videos here. In Ireland, we drove along the entire island on the coastal route and explored the world famous Wild Atlantic Way. After that, we ferried from Belfast to Scotland and drove the North Coast 500 route in the Highlands before making our way back to mainland Europe. During that time, we experienced lots of rainy and overcast days, which put our battery to the test. Our battery pack never failed us. We only charged it using our 400 watts of solar on the roof occasionally supplemented by a 200 watt ground deploy array and our 20 amp DC to DC charger when the engine is running. Our state of charge rarely dipped below 50% during the entire year. To give you an idea of what we run off this electrical system, so you can predict whether or not this would be enough for you, here's a complete power audit of the van's electrical system. Your setup will likely be somewhat different, but this includes all the appliances and electronic devices that most people will have in their camper vans. Some of you might wonder, so let me tell you that we currently do not use an induction stovetop. We do have one, but we only use it when we have electric hookups. They can draw a huge amount of power and we're required about twice our current battery and solar capacity in order to sustain it. So here's a list of everything that uses battery power in our van and how much it uses each day. First, our CFX3 75DZ Dometic fridge freezer combo. And that draws roughly 25 amp hours per day. Second, we have two fantastic fans on the roof. Depending on the day and the temperature outside, it'll either not be used at all, which means it draws zero amp hours, or if it's used, we might use it in a hot day throughout the night, which can draw as much as 20 amp hours per day. Number three, we have several Android and iOS devices. Surprisingly, they take quite a bit of power to charge. Each day, we probably go through between six to 12 amp hours just charging our devices. Number four, we have two laptops. Depending on the day, we may or may not use our laptops. So that can range between zero to 15 amp hours per day. Number five, we have four LED lights that light the inside of our van. And on the average, they draw only about one amp hour every day. Number six, we have a Wobosto diesel heater. Some days we don't use it. Some days we use it all night long. So that range is between zero to five amp hours per day on the average. Number seven, our propane gas detector. This is a really low, low draw device, but it is constantly on and it's always on, 
but it draws less than one amp hour every day. Number eight is our SureFlow 12 volt water pump. On the average, this probably consumes about two amp hours each day. And lastly, number nine, this is just miscellaneous drone battery charger, camera chargers, GoPro chargers. Depending on the day and how much shooting we're doing, this could be anywhere between zero to 10 amp hours per day. There are other things like an air compressor and a Wi-Fi extender that we only sometimes use. So they don't represent any significant amount of draw, so I won't be including them on this audit. Note that out of all these devices, only the laptops and drone charger requires the use of our 1000 watt inverter. We have designed our system to not rely too much on AC power, so it's only on when it's necessary. This helps to cut down the parasitic draw and the inversion loss of the inverter. Something I haven't shared any information about is a DIY home automation system. There are a handful of smart devices and a Raspberry Pi 4 that is always on as well. Their draws are minimal, but since I haven't talked much about them, I will leave the details for a future video where I plan to share more about how I incorporated home automation technology to some parts of the van and how it's helped out on our day-to-day -day lives. Let me know in the comments if this is something that interests you and would like me to make a video about. So how well has the battery pack been working? The short answer is that it's been great. It has practically been a seamless and maintenance-free transition from our old 225 amp hour AGM batteries that it replaced. The new charging profiles from our solar and DC to DC charger has been doing a great job of keeping the pack topped off. Even during extended days of overcast skies, the extra capacity has kept us from worrying about losing power. And as long as we drive every couple of days, we can sustain these less than ideal solar days. I will get charged back up to 100% on most days during the summer, as long as the sun is out. In Europe, where the latitude is higher and the sun is steeper in angle compared to North America, it is not as easy, particularly as it compares to the southern U.S. states. During these last 400-ish days, we only experienced a couple of nights where the temperatures were near freezing after the heating pads were installed, and everything did its job to keep the battery from suffering temperature-related degradation. I've heard a lot of positive feedback from you guys who watch the Battery Bill series here on YouTube, Instagram, and even crossed paths with some of you guys and met in person while we're on the road. I've got a lot of other projects planned for this coming year and I look forward to sharing them with you guys. So lastly, let me share with you some of the data logged in the Victron Smart Shunt and how that breaks down over this period of time. First of all, my deepest discharge of a 280 amp hour battery was actually 282 amp hours. And this was done during the battery build process where I did the initial capacity test. I've not come anywhere close to draining it that far during actual use. Number two, my average discharge is about 140 amp hours. Now this is not a daily average. This is only counting when the full charge cycle is recorded according to the smart shunt. I'll explain that a little bit later. Number three, my cumulative amp hour drawn is 15,886 amp hours. That is about an average of 40 amp hours every day for 400 days since the initial installation. And about half of those days were on the road while the other half were stationary here on Hvar Island, Croatia. This is also not counting all of the power consumed directly from the solar panels during the day while the battery is already full or while driving when the DC to DC charger is supplying power directly. Number four, the total charged energy. And that is 219 kilowatt hours. And that averages out to about 547 watt hours of power input per day. We've had days where we've collected more than 2000 watt hours from the solar panels and some days less than 100. This represents an average of over 400 days. Number five, total charge cycles. And the Victron Smartshine recorded 10 of them. The Victron algorithm counts a full charge cycle only when the battery state of charge meets a certain criteria. It has to do with a predetermined low state of charge point and when it recharges fully afterwards. I've not read all of the Smart Shunt manual, so I don't know for sure the specifics of that algorithm, but this number coincides with roughly how often my state of charge has dipped below 50%. And from that, I assume this is also how it comes up with the 149 amp hour discharge average. As you can see for 280 amp hour pack, this is roughly at 47% state of charge when it logs the charge cycle. 
Number six, full discharges. This has only happened once, and that is again when I first built the battery and ran a complete discharge cycle from 100% down to zero. I've not even come close to a fully discharged cycle since and likely never will. And I think the lowest I ever got was in the low 40s. Number seven, synchronizations. In this one, Victron counted 146. I believe this counter logs each time the battery achieves a full charge and the shunt automatically runs a synchronization cycle to keep the state of charge meter from drifting over time. That means this has happened more than a third of the days since I installed the battery. Most of these days were in the summer months, but since I was in Ireland and Scotland during the bulk of that time, we saw plenty of overcast days that prevented us from reaching 100% state of charge. So that's everything. Hopefully this helped answer some of your questions about how my DIY lithium iron phosphate pack performed in the real world. I will keep you guys updated on how it's working, especially if I come across anything unusual and unexpected. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. So far after a year, I'm very happy with how this has worked out. For those of you who are interested in building a DIY lithium pack for your camper or off-grid home, feel free to find my build video linked in the description below. I also offer personalized online sessions to help you design and build your system if you need any help. Hope you guys are enjoying the holidays, and we'll see you guys in the new year.